Of course. EJ, you haven't told us yesterday's mileage. 484, Mr. Ismay. Are you pleased with that? Yes, I am, sir. It's more than I expected for the first day. In that case, I'm sure we'll do even better today. Begging your pardon, Captain. Mr. Pittman has requested his course. <laughs> Increase speed, Mr. Lightoller, to 21 knots. And tell Mr. Pittman to set a course west, northwest, 292 degrees. That's the northern track, sir. I'm well aware of that, Mr. Lightoller. It will save us both coal and time. At least three hours. Three hours? Oh, E.J. Well done. Much better. I'm sorry to disturb you, Captain. Who the devil are you? Second wireless operator Bride, sir. With the Marconi International Marine Radio Telegraphy and Signal Communications Company Limited. What is it, Mr. Bride? Uh, message, sir. From the furnace line of Rappahannock 40 out of Halifax. She reports an iceberg. Thank and... you, Mr. Bride. I can read. Right. <coughs> uh, I mean. Aye aye, sir. Ah, oh, but not her last, Mrs. Widener. Certainly not her last. How long did you buy in Paris, Mrs. Astor? Oh, thank goodness I didn't have to. Take you just where it was. <laughs> Excuse me, Captain. What is it, Mr. Lightola? Have you any instructions regarding our current speed, sir? Maintain 21 knots, Mr. Lightola. 21 knots, aye, sir. 21 knots? Come, come, EJ. I promise these gentlemen that we will arrive in New York before nightfall Tuesday. At this rate, we'll never make it. I'm afraid it's too soon for either of us to save Mr. Ismay. I trust you'll forgive me. Oh, must you leave us now, Captain? Fortunately, Mrs. Thayer, my duties on the bridge, though not nearly so pleasant as being here with you attractive ladies, do require my attention. Please excuse me. Mr. Pittman, you qualified for your master's papers when you were only 25, the youngest man in the line's history. Yet here you are still with no ship of your own. What are you waiting for, Mr. Pittman? The master of a ship carries a heavy responsibility, Captain. Every single minute, Mr. Pittman. I'm just not certain I'm up to it, sir. A ship's master must be certain of everything, Mr. Pittman, even when he's not. And I'm as certain of that as I am that this is my final crossing. Captain? After 43 years of service, I informed the line of my wish to retire. But they asked me to stay on to see them through this maiden voyage. My wife was disappointed, of course, but I could not refuse. Take over, Mr. Pitt. The 
thousands on board, each in his class. You are the master of all that must pass. Yours to set course, yours to command. You hold their souls in the palm. Passengers are reminded not to bring food back down to their cabins. And what's the reason for that, then? It encourages rats. But rats on a brand new ship. They're the first aboard. Oh, well, they're welcome to have part of my share. Sure, and the entire family could live a week off just what I've been leaving on my plate. And all of it for free. Free? Are you daft? And why do you suppose they're charging us every bit of 60 shillings for our passage? What do I need with all this fine cloth and electrical light? Well, Jim Farrell. I'm gonna have fine cloth, electrical light, and a whole lot more when I get to America, including my own personal bathtub. I'm gonna rise straight to the top, I will, just like cream. I will be a proper person. People will look up to me. What a girl that girl I aspire to heights of glory In the new world that can be In that grandest nation I'll stand tall <laughs> Reach my very highest hopes of all I'm even to have a real profession I am Me too! Me three! I want to be a lady's maid
old, isn't it, Mr. Lightoller? Yes, rather more like February than April. Ah, oh, Andrews, there you are. I've been looking for you everywhere. I want to get your opinion on how you think the crossing is going so far. Not as well as I'd hope for, Mr. Rispeck. We've got a few problems. Really? Such as what? Well, I'm disappointed in the water pressure for the upper decks and the kitchen staff are complaining that the sleeping quarters are overheated. Ah, oh, there's gratitude for you. Why, in my father's day, they'd be lucky to get any heat at all. Now tell me, Andrews, are you satisfied with our present speed? Yeah, I think so, sir. Well, I don't mind telling you, I am very disappointed. The weather is fair, the sea is calm. Why are we not going faster? We're doing 22 knots, Mr. Rispey. That's faster than any White Star ship has ever managed. And so be straight, Andrews. You chaps at Harland and Wolf built the Cunard ship too. Was Titanic intentionally designed to run slower? I really must protest the implication, sir. When your father ran the line, he demanded safety and comfort be full speed. Cunard may get their passengers there a little faster, yes, but White Star gives them a far better ride. It is a new world, Andrews. These days, everybody wants speed above everything else. <laughs> Why, the Americans would gladly lose their dinner over the rail if they could arrive in New York a day sooner. Mr. Ismay, is there something you wanted, sir? Ah, E.J., I was wondering if you could now predict with any certainty our arriving in New York by Tuesday. I can only say that it's possible. Possible? It is imperative, damn it! If we have to turn off until Wednesday morning, our return to England will be delayed a full 24 hours. Titanic must be known as a six-day ship, EJ! Why, even the bloody Krauts can do it! And if second-rate ships like Deutschland and the Kaiser Wilhelm can turn around in a fortnight, then so by God shall we! I'm sure we'll do everything we can, Mr. Ismay. Splendid. It's all anyone can ask, isn't it? <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Who's that? Barrett. Barrett. Oh, the Stoker, I remember you. Welcome to the most important place on the whole ship. What can I do for you, Barrett? I heard you could actually send a message back to England. Oh, you heard right, all right. Sitting right here, I can communicate with important people all over the world. Yeah? Yeah, I'll explain how it works, but I, uh... Hold on, hold on. There's a message coming in. Iceberg warning from the... Baltic. That's your old ship? Yeah. Uh, as you can see, I'm awfully busy, Barrett, so uh, what is it you want? Oh, shouldn't the captain know about that iceberg, then? <laughs> oh, no, don't worry. I've already sent half a dozen warnings just like it, but if you, uh, if you ask me, they don't know what the bloody hell they're doing up there. <laughs> Excuse my French. It's like what we say in the telegraphy business. You can't be a radio operator and remain a Christian. Uh, so, how much would it cost to send a message back to my girl in England? Sort of a romantic message. Oh, very pretty. But romantic or not, minimum rate's two pounds for pence. Two bloody quid? That's twice what they pay me to America. Hold on. Maybe I could offer you a professional discount. Yeah, yeah. what would that cost? Uh, let's see. Nothing. They'll never know the difference. Oh, very much. You must be a romantic sort of person yourself. Help me. Romance and telegraphy don't mix, see? How can you communicate with only one person when you've got the entire world talking to you? Now, I'll leave a name and address. But Darling Watkins, Billsthorpe, Nottinghamshire. Or what's that you're doing? Darling Watkins, Billsthorpe, Nottinghamshire. Well, what's the rest of it? I don't know. It's got to be just right. You see, Darlene's sort of funny. You see, she said if I wouldn't take her serious, she knew somebody who would. And I'm not back for another two weeks yet, so I might as well come right out with it. I'll be coming back to you, darling. Back to your dark eyes and hair. Marry me when I return, darling. And until that day, my love, take care. Be thee well. May the Lord who watches all watch over May God's heaven be your blanket as you softly sleep. Marry me when you're.
I was young and shy, detached and sad, spent my days indoors, a homebound lad, hardly spoke, few friends I kept myself to myself, quite a Then I found Marconi's telegraph. It could span the planets with by half. Fifty yards, two thousand miles. The same touch the spark, sound the tone. And the night was alive with a thousand voices fighting to be heard. And each and every One of them connected to me And my life came alive with a thousand voices Tapping out each word Like a thousand people joined with a single heart Beat, tapping out I did, did, I did, I did Did, did, I did, I did It's alive with a thousand voices watches watch over me And every one of them connected to me Signed, Fred. Treat to your man with a beat before we lay this down. Do you do my 
Pittman, what's our present speed? Steady at 22 knots, Captain. Have there been any reports of mechanical difficulties since reaching that speed? No, sir, none at all. Very good. Increase speed to 23 knots. Captain, there's been another ice warning. The Sovereign reports a large berg at 42 degrees north. 42 degrees. Well, that's in total agreement with all the other reports we received, except for this one from the French liner La Touraine. 41 degrees. That puts it a good deal closer, doesn't it, Mr. Pittman? How do you explain the difference? It must have been an error in their transmission, sir. On the radio. I'll never trust that damn thing. I'm afraid it's here to stay, Captain. Which means we'll soon be taking our orders from safe, dry little offices on shore. It's a brand new world, sir. Thank God I won't be around to see it. Mr. Pittman, 23 knots. 23 knots, aye, aye, sir. Engine room. Increase speed to 81 revolutions of the wing propellers, Mr. Bell. Hello, I'm still waiting for you. Strauss. What for? For the reason you sent our son Jesse that radio message. He and his cousin Nathan want to make Macy's the largest retail store in the world. They even want to give away catalogs like Sears and Robot. It's totally crazy. What did you tell him? Go ahead. It's a new world out there, Mrs. Strauss, and I don't pretend to understand it. Good evening, sir. Henry Edges, first class steward. Good evening. Edgar Bean, second class passenger. Bean. I know that name. You probably met my wife. She loves dancing with millionaires. Ah, yes, quite so, sir. My condolences. That is a far off look I'm seeing in your eyes, Kate. Which far off place is it you're looking? There, her eye. But if you must know, I was thinking about a friend of mine, a very dear friend. It seems she left home because she'd made a mistake. A mistake she couldn't get rid of. She should have been more careful. So, now, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? Who knows? Maybe I'll run for the Congress again to tell you the truth. I really liked it there. And the best part is, you don't have to know anything. <laughs> it seems she wants more from life than I can give her. Isn't that always the way, sir? I had a wife once. What happened? Nothing. I still have her. <laughs> In all my years, I've never seen it so calm. Is it my imagination, or are we moving much faster than ever before? So tell me, Jim, if my friend were here instead of me, what would you say to her? Well, I'd say... Well, what would I call her then?